Hi, I'm Annie Fitzsimmons. I'm your Washington Realtors legal hotline lawyer. Welcome back to our video series entitled DB's Wishlist. Hi, Annie. It's Jessica with Northwest Home Team Realty in Tumwater, Washington. And I'm the owner and designated broker here. And I have a question for you. I'm getting more and more buyer's agency agreements turned into my office. And I applaud my agents for doing that. But I'm seeing that it has the buyer's signature and the broker's signature, but nothing filled in under the compensation or the area. Can you help me explain to my brokers the importance of this and what the repercussions are if they're not filled out? Thanks so much. Thanks, Jessica. Like you, I'm really glad that more brokers are using buyer agency agreements. Let's talk about though why it is that brokers are using buyer agency agreements because maybe that will help buyers understand the importance of filling in those two provisions. Let's talk about the geographical area first. When you and your buyer sit down to talk about the services you're gonna provide, hopefully you've figured out where they wanna see properties and that you're competent to show them properties in that area. Let's lock that into, a, into the written provision of the Form 41A so that we have established up front where it is that buyer wants to see property and that you're gonna be showing them properties in that area. You could define city, county, subdivision, doesn't really matter. It's completely up to you and the buyer how you define the geographical area. But capture that agreement in writing so the buyer can't later say, you didn't even show me properties in the area where I wanted to see them. Okay, compensation. Compensation provision is really important and there are essentially three primary reasons why a broker would use a buyer agency agreement with a buyer and, and the compensation provision is important for all three reasons. Number one, you might have to sue the buyer for compensation. Number two, you need to educate your buyer. And number three, you might be using the buyer agency agreement as a tool to negotiate with the seller. If you need to sue the buyer for compensation, and very, very few of you are ever going to need to do that, but if you needed to do that, you've got to have an amount written in the paragraph four of the buyer agency agreement. If you've left paragraph four blank or written in zero, then that's what you're gonna be entitled to as compensation in any lawsuit where the, the buyer agency agreement is the basis for the lawsuit. If you write in zero or leave it blank, that's the same amount of compensation you're gonna earn at, in a lawsuit based on that contract. No point in having the contract if you leave it blank. Number two, education. Use the buyer agency agreement to educate your buyer about how it is that you're compensated. You can't expect buyer to know how important it is for them to write the purchase and sale agreement with you if you don't tell them that it's important for them to write the purchase and sale agreement with, with you. Buyer, I'm gonna show you every house out there that I think is gonna work for your purposes. We're gonna spend lots of time together, but I'm not gonna be compensated if you write the purchase and sale agreement with a different broker. So that's why it's really important for you to call me when you find the house that you want. We'll probably be together when you find the house that you want, but on the off chance that you find it at an open house or driving around on your own based on the uh, print out of listings that I sent you through the MLS, make sure you call me when you find that house. Number three, broker. It's possible the seller's gonna offer less compensation than what you and I have agreed is the amount that I'm gonna be entitled to. And <clears throat> let's say that you've explained to buyer that you expect to receive X percent compensation from the transaction. And buyer says to you, you know what, that's really great. I, you're, you're, you're worth that. You should get that amount of money. But the problem is I don't have that amount of money in addition to my down payment and my closing costs. So I can't sign a contract saying I'm gonna to agree to pay you X percent if the seller doesn't agree to pay that. But buyer, you can. And, and here's how that works. When I have a written agency agreement with you, buyer, where you've agreed to pay me X percent compensation, then buyer, you're gonna owe me that amount at closing. And wait a minute, I know that sounds scary, but the reason that's important is because that now becomes a closing cost of yours. It's a cost of closing that you're gonna have to pay me that compensation in order to close the transaction. And buyer, it is perfectly reasonable for you to ask a seller to help pay some of your closing costs. So if we have a seller who is offering through the MLS less compensation than what you and I have agreed is the amount of compensation I will have earned, then by you signing this buyer agency agreement and us agreeing that my compensation will be X percent, if seller has offered something less than X percent through the MLS, this buyer agency agreement is the 
basis for me going to that listing broker, going to that seller and saying, buyer is obligated, they have a closing cost of X amount to me as their broker, seller, will you pay that so that I can introduce my buyer to your property? Because if you don't agree to pay the compensation that my buyer owes me, my buyer can't purchase your property. Seller might say in that circumstance, no, I'm not increasing the compensation that, I, that I've offered. Or seller might, agree to pay more. Or it might be something that you negotiate through the negotiations over the purchase and sale agreement. Through the buyer agency agreement or an amendment to the buyer agency agreement, you need to establish with the buyer what they want you to do if the seller is offering less compensation than what they have agreed to pay you. Do they want you to just not show them those houses? Do they want you to simply tell them before you introduce the property to them? or? Do they want you to attempt to negotiate with that seller and listing broker before you ever even introduce the property to them to increase the amount of compensation that the seller is offering to pay if your buyer chooses to purchase the property? Have that conversation with your buyer. Educate them about the industry. Help them to understand that 99% of the time, this is not gonna become an issue because seller is going to pay the compensation that you and buyer have agreed you'll receive at the closing. But in that off chance that it doesn't play out that way, the buyer agency agreement is the tool you need to negotiate on their behalf to have seller pay that compensation. If you have questions on this topic or any other, send an email to me, legalhotline at warealtor.org. Thank you for being a Washington Realtors member.